Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today I'm going to talk briefly about the Black Adam movie and also kind of go on a, not a rant, but just kind of give you my thoughts, unedited, mostly unedited probably, um, about the future of the DC Universe. Uh, because I never did a proper Black Adam movie review on this channel. I actually gave my thoughts on a podcast called Mad Scientist Party Hour. I'll put a link to it down below if you want to go check it out uh, back when the movie came out. Um, but I've had time to sit with the movie a little bit. And I'm, you know, I'm still feel the same way about it. I just feel like it was an okay movie, and uh, and I thought everyone was fine in it, and I thought the effects looked fine and great. Uh, actually, at times looked really great, uh, which makes sense because I think they poured in a lot of money into this movie more than they are claiming. I feel, um, but that's just my you know my gut instinct on it. Uh, not you know not proven by any facts or anything. I just they came out and said. No, this movie's not a flop because we only spent this amount on it and only this amount on marketing. But I'm like, wow, well, maybe you didn't spend that much on marketing as uh, you probably would have if there was no pandemic. So I'll give you that one. But uh, as far as uh, the budget, like this movie has visual effects that are like <laughs> really, really good. And uh, and obviously they had time to do it because, uh, you know, they pushed the movie back a couple times and stuff. But still, uh, I, I still feel like the budget for this movie had to be more than they're claiming. Uh, but again, that's just my, my feeling on it. Uh, so the movie itself, though, I just felt like was fine. And I think because the movie was just fine, word didn't travel about it being amazing. Um, you know, I I think a lot of times that, you know, people want to, when they're part of like a, a fandom, they want to claim a certain reason for something failing. And they always look at it from a fan's perspective. And they never look at it from like a, a regular audience member perspective. If if all the fans and regular audience members went and saw this opening weekend and all came out going, holy crap, the DC Universe is back or it's finally here or however you want to look at it, you know, like whether Henry Cavill was in it or not. And we are going to talk about spoilers for this movie. So if you haven't seen it, uh, just know that. Um maybe go away and then, you know, come back for the i I'll put a time stamp uh, of where the, uh, the next conversation starts. Um, but yeah, Henry Cavill being in this, I don't think really made or, you know, or broke this movie. I think it was cool that they put him in there and it was great for the Snyder cut fans and the Snyder fans in general and people who just all around liked Man of Steel and, and those movies. I personally didn't. I have nothing against Henry Cavill. I think he would have made a great Superman if someone else had written and directed his movie um but uh but because zach did i just didn't i wasn't as much in love with that movie as, as a lot of people are i don't hate the movie i'm not like a massive hater of it i just i'm kind of like in the middle and that's how i feel about this movie and i feel a lot about a lot of dc movies and granted i feel like that about marvel movies and i'm a huge comic book fan so i would i would like to come out of some of these movies going holy crap like i did winter soldier you know like that was that changed things in my mind at least uh for for some of the marvel universe because i was like wow that was really good like better than i thought it could be um and that's what i was kind of hoping for movies like black adam and man of steel like you, you always hope for the best and when i just get like a okay movie that's how i see it you know part of my brain is a regular audience member and part of me is a super fan and part of me is also someone who knows how filmmaking works and storytelling is is told and uh, based on my you know opinions obviously and i felt like this movie just it didn't take any risks. It didn't, uh, you know, try to, um, you know, put itself out there in a clever or interesting way, um, or even in that cool of a way. Even if you're just going for cool factor, I felt like there was a couple scenes in the movie that were cool, uh, but I didn't feel like it it delivered like all around because the first hour of the movie bored the living hell out of me, and it wasn't until the last act where I'm like, okay, the the action got there. Some of the character stuff started up creep in a little bit, although they didn't do a ton with Hawkman and Dr. Fate. Uh, th those are the two characters outside of Black Adam that got the most screen time, uh, roughly, uh, besides the family that you know, Black Adam hangs out with. And so I thought all the actors were, were fine in their roles. I just wanted more character stuff. I wanted more risks taken on some level. And I understand maybe why they didn't take any risks, because they were like, hey, we, we just want to make a competent DC film that doesn't overthink things and just kind of makes it kind of fun for the masses, I think is what they were going for. But the problem is, is that I think at this point in the phase of the DC movie universe, you can't just do that. Like you, you can, as they did, 
and The Rock has come out and said, hey, I'm really proud of the movie. And there's been all this drama about, you know, whether how much it made or if it's profiting or if it's going to lose money or whatever. It may balance out or break even at some point and someday. But uh, it's it's definitely a flop because when investors invest billions or millions of dollars into your movie, they want all their money back and then some as quickly as possible. So if your movie is like, oh, in a year, you know, after rentals and everything, you know, we'll finally be broken even or in six months, we'll find, you know, investors are going to be like, cool, bro. Yeah, give me my money back, I guess. So I didn't lose anything, but then never ask me for money again. That's pretty much what happens there. And so for that reason, you know, I, I just don't see this movie as being like this massive hit that The Rock is trying to spin it as. It just it just isn't, you know, and I respect Dwayne Johnson and what he does, but at the end of the day, he has one mode, and that's kind of a entertain, entertainer slash wrestler kind of promotions guy. He's a hype guy. He That's what he does, and even though he's genuine and sincere at times and, and has a lot of heart and, you know, and is a very giving dude, I've seen him do a lot of stuff for charity and stuff, and that's, he's an awesome person on a personal level, but when it comes to his movies, I mean, he really hyped this one up so big like i'm going to change the dc universe everything's going to revolve around black adam moving forward we're going to we're going to bring in the justice league and the suicide squad we're going to do all these things and it's just all ego and bravado on a level that it's like yeah but your 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 talent can't cash the checks that your mouth is writing you know it's like uh it's just it's too much man like you you, you just went way overboard and i understand you because you're going so overboard, you probably realize, oh crap, there's a fandom out there like that likes the Snyder stuff that thinks I'm, you know, stomping on them and saying that that stuff doesn't count. So let's bring in Henry Cavill, since I have a connection to him through, you know, through my agent and stuff, and let's bring him in and that'll, that'll, you know, keep those people happy as well. And, and that's kind of how I felt like he was doing. He was like, all right, let's do something kind of a little bit for the masses and then we'll have like you know black adam will kind of be an anti-hero so if he wants to kill it won't piss off people who have that kind of point of view in life and then we'll have also we'll have the heroes who don't want to kill characters you know and it's which is funny because hawkman i'm like he carries a mace like i mean he's what do you mean he's not again he's he should be about killing people <laughs> he has a mace with them um you know I, I don't know so i think they could have done more with that character i like aldous hodge a lot and i thought he did good in the role but i just wanted more and and same with pierce brosnan i thought he was awesome uh you know because he's pierce brosnan he's an amazing actor but i wanted more and that's how i kind of felt at the end of that movie i was like you know i just felt like it started to ramp up in the second half and i wanted more and i and i wanted uh i wanted character stuff and i wanted a real establishment of the DC universe. Like, why was Amanda Waller in this movie? How did she know so much about Black Adam just to, for exposition, I guess? And then she dumps all that exposition on the JLA or JSA, and I'm like, why does she? Con why is she connected to the JSA? And then at the end, she reveals that she's connected to Superman. I'm like, so I thought she's on trial. Like, didn't she do something bad in Peacemaker? Or when does this take place? And you know, why Amanda Waller of all characters to put in here? You know, why? Uh, why not just you know put in a new character or something like? I don't know. There was there was so much going on, and I was just like, it, this is unnecessary. A lot of this movie you could edit out and replace with like actual good character stuff and world building stuff. And I felt like this movie just did. Oh, let's do a little bit of this and a little, little bit of that, and let's mix these paint colors together, and let's do this, and without really thinking about it, uh, it just felt like uh, or thinking about it purely from a how to not piss off any audience member way, because that's what this is. This movie is a, is a movie that's in a way made by a committee. Of people who want to try to get as many demographics as possible and in doing so got hardly any demographics because <laughs> it just didn't thrill people and then word of mouth wasn't amazing on this movie and then that's where we end up with kind of the death of this form of the dc universe so you did change the dc universe uh, uh rock you actually did change the hierarchy of power by making a movie that was so mediocre that it causes it's causing this studio to like really reform now granted not all that's his fault i mean there's you know the company's been sold a, a number of times warner brothers over the years and and the company itself just sounds like it's in a massive world of of trouble and hurt and honestly at some point i i think a company that's successful like universal is just going to come in and buy them and then fold all their movies into the universal library and then that way Universal at their theme parks can get rid of Marvel Island and make it DC Island and you know have the DC characters to put into their theme parks at Universal like I see that that seems like a smart business move for Universal later on um, So whatever James Gunn and everyone's gonna do right now with David Zasloff. It's just temporary They're gonna do like a you know, maybe five or maybe they'll get ten years of movies like they say they are I doubt it though, but uh, it all depends on the success of the first couple obviously, but 
their their 10-year plan I, I'm just not buying I think there's a short-term plan for Warner Brothers and that's to sell off a lot of things make it profitable and then sell it to a company who wants to buy them you know uh, at some point make them look better for a company to buy so I don't know that's just my that's my cynical side coming out there but a lot of people in the masses I just they're just not clicking with the DC universe and and so as much as I hope for the best with them with uh, James Gunn coming in you know I also I'm a little weary because I feel like first of all a lot of people turned down that job or refused the job when they got offered it for the DC head of the studio uh, you know position and you know James Gunn took it as uh, but with someone else because obviously it's going to be a lot of hard work I mean, it is going to be a very thankless job at times, um, and it's going to be um, it's going to be tough because constantly you're going to be having to make decisions that you just pray are the right ones, <laughs> you know. And that's already the case when you make movies. Uh, even Black Adam, you know, as critical as I am of that movie of it just being mediocre, people worked really hard to make those decisions for the movie to become mediocre. <laughs> so imagine being in charge of multiple movies. Um, but my, my issue though is already what we've been seeing with James Gunn. Like, it's like, okay, now you're one half, you're like a two-parter Kevin Feige, you and this other guy. And I'm sorry, I don't remember the other guy's name. I apologize. Not meaning to be disrespectful. I just don't remember his name. <laughs> um, but, uh, but James Gunn, like, you know, he's already, they, he hired himself to write the new Superman movie. And I'm like, okay, that already doesn't, in my opinion, look that good. Um, and I also don't feel like he's a good fit for Superman. I could be wrong, you know, um, but I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not into it <laughs> for the most part. I've liked some of James Gunn's stuff. You know, obviously Guardians of the Galaxy is a lot of fun. He took characters that I just never cared about in the Marvel Universe and turned them into fun characters on screen with a lot of heart and, uh, and, and great rapport with each other. Picked some great actors to be in the movie. So he delivered on that and, and I was really surprised and that kind of turned him, you know, more on my radar because I'm familiar with some of his earlier work and then I liked Slither. Um, I like some of his stuff. You know, he wrote uh, Dawn of the Dead that Zack Snyder directed. And so I'm like, okay, I like this guy. And he's come from very humble filmmaking beginnings. So to be at the level he's at now where he's the head of DC films, you know, I just already I'm starting to see cracks with his behavior because it's one thing, you know, for people to call out scoopers and stuff. I've certainly done that on Twitter before. And then I realized like, why am I doing this? Like, who cares? Like, who cares if someone puts misinformation about Venom out there? Why does it bother me so much? Um, I think mainly because, you know, I have viewers that will go and watch that, digest it, and then come back to my live streams whenever I do them and go like, hey, man, I heard this and this and this and this. And it's like, yeah, well, I'm not going to comment on any of those because those come from, to me, unreliable scoopers. And then I just try to move on. And James Gunn, though, like he's instead of doing that and, and kind of taking a more professional route where he's just like, you know what? I'm going to just cancel my Twitter account. Like, I'm going to go and, and be like Kevin Feige and just kind of be quiet and work on this stuff because it's hard work, right? It's like that's to be ahead of the DC Universe, even, you know, one of two people that are now in charge of the DC Universe. It's still it's a it's a massive undertaking. It's a job that nobody wanted, right? Like most people turn that job down because they knew how much drama and hard work and BS that it was going to be involved with. And James Gunn is like, yeah, I'll do it. You know, me and this other guy will do it. And so there's a little bit of ego there. And, uh, and, and I guess you need a little bit of that, I guess, to take the job. But then he goes on these Twitter tirades where he's like calling out scoopers. And I'm like, dude, who cares? Like, I mean, that's the thing is like, I understand because at first I used to do that on Twitter. I'd be like, oh, this person's wrong. This person got this wrong. Um, and then eventually I was like, like I said, I, I, a maturity level hit at some point where I was like, why am I doing this? Like, who gives a crap? And then I deleted Twitter and I walked away. And I feel like James Gunn needs to do that big time because, okay, you called out a scooper or whatever. The one thing I've learned about the scooping game is that there's a little bit more nuance to just black and white. And also I know that what people hear from a source can change. Like you could, I know people at Warner Brothers, not anymore. Most of them have gone um, with the new regime changes and everything. But the people I knew, even they would like have full scripts in their hands of things that were greenlit and ready to go. And they would be like, hey, you know, this, you're going to love some stuff coming up. They wouldn't tell me details, obviously, but they'd be like, there's some things you're going to love as, as a fan of this character, this character. You're going to love it. And then none of those things happened. And, uh, and, and I got it from like almost a direct source uh, on many occasions. And I never shared that stuff because I know that sometimes these things just don't happen. And that most times as a scooper, you will be shown to look like an idiot more than you'll be shown as someone who, you know, gets information right. Because things and decisions change 
every single day when millions and millions of dollars are involved. So that's just so once I started, you know, wrapping my head around that concept, I kind of was like, all right, I'll, I'll ease off scoopers because they're just they're they don't they don't that's that's they know what they're doing. They they know that they're getting into a piece of information that maybe would change one day, but they get so excited about it and they and they their audience has depended on them for that stuff now that they feel like they have to share it and uh, it's like crack, you know, they they're addicted to it and they're addicted to the feedback they get. So so I've kind of like leaned back and, and kind of been like, whatever, you guys go do that scooping thing. It's not for me. And it's not something I have a ton of respect for because you're just you're just a parrot, you know, repeating what someone else says. And you're not really doing that much work or not much research in, in some areas. So I just, you know, backed away. But James Gunn is like, no, I'm going to double down on things. I'm going to call these people liars. And then he starts calling people at the trades, you know, at like Variety and and, uh, and Hollywood Reporter saying they're getting their information wrong and, and stuff isn't true. And it's like, yeah, but what they heard may have been true at one point and now it isn't. And, and I get that you want to, you know, prevent the spread of misinformation on some level, but you're at least, at least there's people out there still talking about DC, whether they're right or wrong. And, and I think that's what Kevin Feige realizes sometimes. I think he's just like, look, man, there's all these rumors about who's going to be in this next season of this show or, or in this or whatever just let them talk like because as long as we're trending or or you know being talked about every single day we're staying in the zeitgeist of pop culture so just let people come up with their theories and their rumors and spread whatever because it's not hurting anybody like who cares then that's what i ultimately realized too if a scooper gets something wrong who cares <laughs> it at least got people talking about superman for a week you know if they spread a superman rumor or at least it got them to talk about venom you know for a week uh you know whatever so to me it's like, good, man, do that. Perpetuate the system and keep the cycle going of, you know, information and keep yourself and the things you're a fan of in the, you know, the, in the, the spotlight, essentially. And James Gunn coming out and attacking uh, people and saying they're wrong. I'm just like, don't you have work to do? Aren't you writing a Superman movie? Like, like it, this feels like it should be beneath you to be on Twitter and snap at people. And I know some people are like, oh, he's just a, he's a human like the rest of us. He's allowed to vent or do whatever he, and it's like, yeah, he, you're right. He is. But for me, it looks unprofessional. For me, he should maybe hire someone uh, and do something different than Marvel and, and everybody else does and say, hey, this is our spokesperson for the DC universe. They're very professional. I've checked out their Twitter or Instagram or Facebook for years. You know, they don't, uh, you know, they're not toxic. They're not horrible. When people ask them tough questions, they respond in a really positive and, uh, and direct way um, without making someone feel silly or stupid, you know. Uh, because obviously sometimes you get fan questions and they just don't know how to word things properly and you shouldn't take it out on them uh, because they can't structure a sentence, you know, a certain way that or that you like or whatever. So again, these are all things I've learned over the years. So I, if I were James, I would hire someone who just has like a clear head on their shoulders to be the spokesperson and then be like, hey guys, we're going to share a, a little snippet of something every like one or two weeks just to get you guys talking, get the conversation going. Um and, and beat scoopers to the game. That's how you do it. You know, create someone, create a job for someone and say, hey, let people know that, you know, don't give them anything big because obviously you want to give those to the trades and you want to help those news cycles and those, you know, those websites and articles and, and, and newspapers. And all. You want to help that. You want that one. That's your main hub to get news out there and stuff. But from time to time, say, hey, we're thinking about developing something for this character. Here's a poll. What do you guys think? You know, and even if you're not really going to listen to the poll, still do it. Make fans feel included on some level. You know, make them feel like they're part of a universe because that's something Marvel does, but they let fans do it. That would be neat if DC was like, hey, we're going to have a person on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and whatever other social medias you want, or even on YouTube. And every Friday, we're going to post this. And it's going to be like three minutes long, and it's going to give you a little snippet of something we might be working on or thinking about. And that would, I think, help generate that conversation weekly, get you trending every week, you know, get the, get, keep you in the pop culture spotlight. It's just like, come up with interesting things like that, or, 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 you know, and it's interesting to me, maybe not to you, but come up with a plan like that, that involves your fans more. And that starts winning you good graces, because that's what DC needs. After mediocre stuff like Black Adam, we need a few risks taken, and we also need really smart storytelling. Um, I think the Batman was a good a step in a good direction, and I think Joker was a step in a good direction. And those are characters that are completely independent of a shared universe. And at some point, I'd be like, yeah, keep it that way. 
You know, if you do, you know, do these characters justice, give them something, you know, solid on a foundation and then figure out later how you're going to connect them all together or come up with a certain batch of characters that are going to be in a shared universe and then cut everyone else out. Um, honestly, at this point, though, as much as the Batman is interesting and it, it is, is world building and trying to build into more, you know, uh, Batman stuff with the TV shows with Penguin and, and other things and villains or whatever they're trying to do um, to me. I would say scrap all that. You know, it, it's sure it was good. It was a good movie, but it wasn't that mind blowing of a of a Batman you know version to me. Like uh, I don't like a world where Batman can't fight creatures like Clayface and Mister Freeze and and uh, and Man Bat and stuff. Like I want that world to exist. And in Robert Pattinson's, it was so grounded, like Christopher Nolan style, that I just I don't know if I'd ever believe a Clayface in that world. So scrap it man I, I would just scrap it all and i would scrap you know any plans for wonder woman which it seems like james gunn's doing and and that's the other thing he's coming out and he keeps repeating the same things oh well we might work with you in the future because you know he's not going to rule out the possibility of multiverse storytelling uh because marvel does that so i can see him doing it and plus that's massively successful in 10 years people are going to be like what is henry cavill superman up to boom bring him back bring him into the the movie universe wherever you are in the movie universe have him play earth 2 superman with the gray templates on his side or whatever you know there's so many options so of course james gunn knows all that and he's he's but he's openly telling people online like hey it was nice meeting you thank you so much you know we'll, we'll keep in touch that kind of thing but i got to move on the next chapter of dc universe the first chapter of the new dc universe is starting and we need to get to work on that and it's like yeah he's he's just sounds like a, a broken record when it comes to dealing with uh you know, actors and, and professionals. But then when it comes to people who are in like the scooping game or, in, you know, online, he's just snapping at them, at, you know, on things that I feel aren't as black and white. And so I just kind of, I don't know, I, I he's not selling me as a professional, as someone who's taking this very seriously. You know, him posting, you know, a picture of Kingdom Come or whatever every now and again, or posting a picture of Booster Gold or something. It's like, cool. Yeah, you know who the DC Universe characters are. Awesome. Uh, but But you need to really just you know delete your twitter <laughs> or or stay off it or something you have work to do you have a lot of work to do and you may think that you can do that job and also handle things on twitter but if something pisses you off in your daily job which it's gonna because being head of dc films you're gonna get in arguments with people all the time about what's best for these characters and then you're gonna go to twitter and you're gonna take it out on the wrong people and you know and that's what i'm more concerned about for him is that i just don't want to see him start snapping at people where they can turn around and go Actually, you're wrong on this one, James, and that's going to make him look really bad. So James Gunn, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm iffy. I, I think the guy has a lot of talent, and I'm, I'm curious to see what he's going to do. But, you know, if he's writing Superman, he better blow me away because Superman is my, one of my favorite characters at DC. Next, to, Green Lantern's obviously my favorite, but Superman is up there, and it better be awesome. It better blow my mind. Um you know, I don't know. It's, I'm going to set the bar really, really high for him. And maybe that seems unfair, but I don't think so. We've had numerous attempts at Superman recently. Um, and actually, the, my favorite version of Superman in the past few years has been the Superman and Lois show. I've really liked a take on Superman where he's a father and he's not, he's struggling with it. You know, as someone who he's had two of the best dads in comic books, he had Pa Kent and Jarrell. Like, just talk about ultimate wisdom. You know, like you had super scientific, you know, uh, big picture looking wisdom. And then you had like small, you know, uh, you know, work, you know, your hands to death kind of, um, you know, middle America, good values, wisdom. And he just two of the best dads ever in comic books. And then he's struggling to be a good dad. And it's like, of course he is. He's had two of the best ones. So I've liked that show. I really have. And I'm, I'm glad it's getting a third season. I think it's going to be the final season, though. But that's fine. As long as they know that and they can wrap up the story, that'd be fantastic. But uh, but for Superman on the big screen. I'm, the bar is set for me. I'm, I'm raising it up now because James is, I don't like some of the way, you know, it's just how he acts sometimes online. Uh, sometimes, you know, he's professional. Sometimes he's he's not. Sometimes he's a, uh, you know, it sounds like a robot where he's just repeating the thing he said before where I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, and then, but when he's not a professional, it's enough for me to have a little bit of concern. So I hope for the best with DC Universe. I really do. But depending on how good his Superman movie is, which again, the fact that he hired himself to write it, it's like, really, dude, so you don't trust anyone else to come up with a Superman story? Like, I don't know. If he wrote an outline and then hired a writer to kind of develop it, that would have been one thing, maybe. But but for him to actually write the script and say, no, I am I got to be the guy to write the script, it's like, oh, come on, man. Like, uh, I know you guys are trying to save money over there at Warner Brothers, but 
yeah, I don't know. There's there's a lot of talented people out there, and yes, Superman is a character that needs to get done right, but I don't believe he's a character that's hard to get done right. Um, I just feel like a lot of people overthink him, and uh, and and it's because they're looking at him from a specific fan standpoint. How did Frank Miller look at Superman? How does you know um, Adam Kubert or Tim Sale look at Superman? Uh, you know, how do these people, Jeff Loeb, how do they write and draw Superman? That's what we should base it off of. And it's like, no, no, you just find the essence of the character and the thing that the masses see in the character. They see that Superman is the best of us. And so portray that, you know, yes, maybe obviously you got to have someone struggle. You can't have someone just be like, I'm Superman. I'm the quintessential Superman in the first movie and be like, I know everything. I'm the best at everything. And, you know, I'm the guy you you see, you know, I, you know, I know you can't do that. Obviously, you've got to have a journey, but just be smarter about the journey, uh, you know, just be uh, some, make the journey something that more people could connect to. And I think that's uh, that's where they missed out the last couple times that they've done Superman on the big screen. And I want to see that. I want to see the heart and soul of Superman, even if it's an, you know, the the beginnings of it. I want to see that on screen in a way that most people could connect to, and and tap into and go, yeah, I'm on this guy's side. Like he's making some tough choices, but man, oh man, am I on his side? And I feel like the last few movies, they they there was a couple times where they're like, oh, let's just do something that's cool for Superman. And they don't really think about you know, major consequences of it. Or they're like, oh, we'll pay it off in like four movies down the road. And it's like, no, the journey can't be that long. You, you know, I understand you got to have seeds for a journey in each movie, but it, it can't you can't push things off and say, oh, I had a six picture idea, you know, planned for Superman. No, nope, that's just too much. Like, that's too much. He needs to become Superman a little bit sooner than that. Um, so you guys let me know what your thoughts are. What do you think about Black Adam? And what are your hopes for the future of the DC Universe? Are you excited James Gunn is writing Superman? You know, um, I, I'm, I'm curious to hear all of your thoughts as you've now heard all of mine in a long rant. Uh, but I'm going to do the same thing for Marvel. We're going to talk about Wakanda forever in the next Seek and Destroy. And I'm going to go on to a, a rant and, and, and discussion about the future of Marvel going into Phase 4, uh, 5 now. I guess Phase 5 now. So we'll do the same thing for Marvel in my next video. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.